Many successful companies find it hard to thrive once their founders move on. The next generation doesn't share the same values, or the culture gets watered down. Ray Dalio wants to make sure that doesn't happen at Bridgewater. Ray, you're clearly very concerned with succession and with Bridgewater's future, unsurprisingly, but you're very concerned. Why is it so important? Well, I don't, you know, I was saying if, if, if you're not worried, you need to worry. And if you're worried, you don't need to worry. <laughs> because if you worry about things, then you take care of those things. So when I say concerned, mm. um, uh, we've been going through what we said was a, an up to 10 year transition process. Turned out it's taken about seven years. And concerned would be the wrong way. Uh, wrong word. Um, uh, what I am is um, like, as I say, going from one generation to another. So if you have a 40-year-old who I've worked with, all these people for so many years, and that, you know, that's, that's it. It's now theirs. It's been a trial and error process. Like most learning. Why has it been difficult? You knew it would take time. You figured it oh. would take as long as 10 years, but it's been challenging. Well, because uh, it, we, we knew that that was going to be challenging. And, I mean, it would be so naive not to think it would be challenging. When any uh, founder or, you know, f uh, owner, founder owner, makes a transition to the next generation, um, it's like almost doing anything that is you never done before. And you think about so many organizations, anybody would tell you organizationally, when you're making that kind of a transition, of course it's going to be a new experience. I mean... That's, I, it's a side, it's of everything I do. Everything I do, which is a new experience, is going to be challenging, it's going to have problems, it's going to have mistakes. It's this five-step process that I sort of described in the book. Are you there yet? Or are you at the oh, point where there. Bridgewater can function without Ray Dalio? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is, and, and we know we're there now uh, because of what we've gone through. I mean, we're, and I say no, Nobody's 100% sure of anything. Right. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you whether we would function with Ray Daly, <laughs> you know, but, um, but we're at a stage where uh, uh, I, I've never been more confident that we're in, in great shape. And let me be clear, I'm not leaving the investment part of the thing. Uh, You'll remain a co-CIO. I'm going to remain a co I love investments. I love economics. That's my game. My objective is uh, to not ever be needed to be, to watch others be successful without me. And uh, we are there. I get to play my game, but I don't want to be needed and I'm not needed. You thought you were there before though. How do you know that you have the right leadership in place? You've got two co-CEOs in Eileen Murray and David McCormick. You've got two fellow co-CIOs with Greg Jensen and Bob Prince. How will you know that, they're, that that's the right mixture? And what uh, if one of those well, people, we, what, what happens if one of those people leaves? Well, that's the beauty of it. I mean, you just rattled off the co's. Okay, so there's a co-CEOs, there are co-CIOs. Uh, there's always backup and there's that kind of duplication. There's a board that's overlooking at it. Uh, things that, many of the things that weren't in place when, you know, we started this journey. So, um, you, you know, like uh, I would say if, if you compare us with almost any company and you say, do you have co-CEOs? Do you have co-CIOs? Do you have a team, a large team, um, who's worked together for a long time? It's probabilities. So we've, we've evolved. Um, I think the, uh, all, all organizations go through this, particularly when you have a founder or own company, and uh, you know, it's uh, important to work out that way. But the founder's still going to be around. He's still going to be founder's managing going the portfolios. Be, that's right. But it's like a, it's like a father with... I don't know, maybe that's a bad analogy, but it, it's like a father with um, the kids and the next generation, except the kids are 40 years old. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be a mentor, but my greatest success is when others don't need me. That's the idea of the book. Everything that I know about life and work is in that book. And everything I know about economics and investments will be in the next book. And really, I do believe that there's nothing that I know that's a value that isn't in those two books. And, and I'm also watching them independently 
beyond those principles do great. So uh, I feel good about this transition. I don't think anybody has paid more attention to transition and has been more transparent about that transition than we have. And when you think, how many organizations have over 60-year leaders who are not talking about transition, who are not so transparent, who don't write the rules, who haven't begun a seven-year process? I mean, I would worry about them, not about <laughs> us, right?